guys and welcome to my youtube channel my name is flora in today's video i'm going to be talking about things that you should not do things that you definitely should avoid if you're new to the uk um if you just see my face for the very first time i make videos here in the united kingdom and i make videos about my life experiences living here in the uk so without any further ado let's just swipe straight into this video That you should not do if you're new to the UK. I've written all my points down because, like I said, I have so much that I'm thinking of today. Like, so I just always write my points down just so I remember because half the time I'm in bed thinking about what to give you guys, my like subscribers. Oh, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button here or here. I'm not sure, it's just a red button, it's free of charge. Feel free to hit it. And yeah, let's just swipe straight into this video. I'm talking too much now. The first thing I wrote down here in no particular order is don't invest in something that you don't understand and that this advice probably goes to everyone even if you're new to the uk even if you've been here decades i'm sure you probably know this but if you don't don't invest in things that you don't understand there are a lot of um scams going out there i know some people think oh i'm in the uk i'm in a safe zone you are in a safe zone to some extent but like people that commit all these frauds sometimes don't even leave you know in the vicinity that you're in but then they have so much access to so much information and you'd be surprised how you know how they've done it this is the internet age you know you just need to click one button or say one code or you know agree to one terms and condition and before you know you're in a place that you didn't expect so yeah um yeah i know a lot of people are going into like invest um uh, property um investment you know cryptocurrency things like that like it's all nice and good if you know the ins and outs of these sort of investments but if you don't know you're new to the uk don't take your last your your life savings of i don't know 15 16 thousand pounds to go buy bitcoin or something the market's obviously crashing at the moment but people that have obviously been in the game for a while they probably are aware of all this um uncertainties and you know they've probably planned better so you know they're in a better position to obviously make that those informed decision decisions but obviously you're new to the uk you don't know about this. So also if you're going to invest in anything always look at the little print the tlc's tlc's apply terms and conditions apply always look at those tiny prints they are the i mean of they are like just just always read okay just read i know sometimes you don't really want to read in all of these papers they send to you it's just demotivating i have other things to be doing than flipping through 15 pages of tiny prints but to be honest when someone knows that you know your stuff <laughs> they know not to you know they know not to talk rubbish to you basically so yeah that's what i'm going to say I think I'm talking too much about you not know, investing in something you don't understand, but I, I'm so passionate about this because I, I just hear some things. I'm like, what? Like, really? They only take advantage of this people because they know they're new to the UK and they don't understand this. Like, <sighs> upsets me so much. But anyways, that's just what I'm going to say. Yeah, I've said this in one of my videos. I'm going to say it again. Don't buy anything on sale just because it's on sale. Because it's on sale doesn't mean that it's cheap. Um, Because we've heard about supermarkets and, you know, um, swapping the price of things and say same it's on sales why it's the exact original price so um it's nice it's good to buy things on sale i'm never gonna lie i do that a lot but if you need it you buy it don't just buy it because oh it's on sale i'll have detergent at home but there's another detergent here that's on sale i'll buy it i don't really think that it makes that much sense but obviously everyone is entitled to their opinion so this is what i think and i'm just sharing so yeah next you can't drive on the right side of the road i know this is very obvious but half the times you know sometimes when you're driving your attention is not fully there like half the time i'm driving i'm i'm thinking about something completely different and i still get to my house <laughs> safe and sound and that's because i learned to drive in the uk so i know to always drive on the left hand side of the road because that's how i learned but if you learned how to drive in nigeria you've come here and you've you know you're driving your international driver's license or you've just listened, recently passed your test sometimes you, your subconscious you will not be aware and especially if there are no cars on the road um for you to like 
imitate you might not be aware and your subconscious you might mistakenly drive on the wrong side of the way it's it's you know it's that human factor it's you know it happens so just always try especially if you're new to the uk and you've uh, you know you've not done your driving test yet or even if you have for the fact that you've been driving elsewhere in your, your subconscious can take over and you mistakenly drive on the wrong side of the road please do not drive on the wrong side of the road driving on the wrong side of the road can mean you having an accident god forbid point on your license because obviously you're going to be at fault um there's no to ways about it so please 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 just try and um, also if you're a pedestrian because obviously i've spoken about drivers if you're a pedestrian i know that in, in nigeria they teach us to look left look right look left again before you cross no in the uk please look right look left then look right again um, except obviously it says otherwise on the road on um, the road markers i'm gonna put something here if it says look left then obviously look left if it says look right then you look right but if you don't have any of those road signs on the road and you're about to cross look right look left look right again that is how you go that's the way forward okay all right so next point is don't ever confuse london for and for the whole of the uk or london for the whole of england i know that we have families back home that say oh my daughter is in london and you actually live in Bath, you live in Manchester, you live in Newcastle and then you're on the phone, you're telling your family that you live in London don't educate them, like because some of them don't actually understand how the UK system works so you can't live in Bath and then you're telling your family members oh I live in London, no if you're going to be telling people back home you do that, don't mistakenly tell anybody here that you live in you know, you live in London when you stay in Surrey, no because they're going to drive to London and not find you there or you live in Essex and say you live in London. No, come on, you're now, you're not, you're, you're now, you know, British, isn't it? You can't be making that mistake. Um, no, I just feel like, just if you, yeah, I, I always try, you know, if, if I'm on the phone to somebody that doesn't live here and, and they say, oh, how is London? I just say, oh, auntie, I'm not in London. I'm, I actually live in, I say my city, you know, um, yeah, I don't, I don't say, oh, London is fine because I don't live in London. Yeah, they don't understand the geography of things here so it's only right that you know you say the right things you shouldn't write the date as month day and year don't do it in the UK because you can confuse a lot of people especially if you work in like a healthcare setting if you work at all in any setting insurance um, insurance company um, any anywhere at all this is so important because what here what we do is day month and year for example let's just assume today is the 12th of january 2022 now that's what today's date is the 12th of january 2022 so 12th is the day january is obviously the month which is all one and then 2022 which is the year if you're going to be writing it in numbers to be 12 01 2022 now, if you mistakenly write the date as m as um, month, day, and year, it is so confusing. It can mean so many things, and it can just be all over the place. So, what it will mean is um, it to be one, it to be zero one, twelve. 2022 that is a complete different date now you work in a healthcare setting working an insurance company you work with a telephone service you anywhere you work in the uk as a matter of fact you're speaking to a customer a representative and they've told and this they've signed the contract to start today the 12th of you know january 2022 and then you go and write um you write obviously the 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 month first and um, before you write the day that could mean something totally different avoid that mistake because can save you a lot it can yeah that could even be put as um lying you know like you've done something wrong with but when actually in actual fact fact it's a genuine mistake so please avoid it i've spent too much time talking about this i don't know i'm so passionate about it but please avoid it and that's it on to the next point you shouldn't be going into the shops to buy alcohol if you don't have your id especially if you're a person of color my caucasian people like to call me person of color um especially if you're of a ethnic minority someone like me that actually look 18 um don't i look 18 like why are you doing your face like that don't i look 18 
<laughs> okay, anyways, so um, I see someone like me that looks 18. I go into the shops and I buy alcohol, and then obviously not for me because I don't drink, but I often buy it as a gift because <laughs> if you drink, I buy it for you, like, it's not even a big deal, anyways. And I have a mask on. The lady will be like, Can you take off your mask, please? I take off my mask, it's still not enough. She'll be like, can I, can I have a look at your ID? I say, I, I promise you, I'm over 25. No, can I can I see your, can I see an ID, please? Can I show my ID? She's like, oh, you don't look it. You definitely don't look it. So you should not go into the store to buy alcohol if you don't have your ID card. Uh, uh, you know, a Caucasian person might not be able to tell your real age, and that's the honest truth. So do not drive a car that isn't insured. If, you're, if your car, if you're... <laughs> If not, if you're not insured on a vehicle and you drive that vehicle and for some reason you get caught, <laughs> um, a few things can happen. Points on your license. That's illegal. It is illegal. If it's not illegal, I'll put it here. But I believe it is illegal. So don't do it. I know a lot of people do it, but to be honest, do you know how they say two people will be in a bus, they'll be going somewhere, or two people will be in a car driving somewhere, there'll be a massive car crash massive accident one person survives and then the other person is dead the grace that carries one person don't think that that same grace will carry you everyone has a special grace that's how i believe in that's what i believe in in life you know so don't say because my friend is driving without an insurance without without an insurance cover i'll do the same your friend friend can be driving for the rest of her life and she will never get stopped by the police but you you just do it once that's when you come out yeah i just thought i'd just say that um Moving on. <laughs> don't ever, don't you ever drive on the bus lane and think you can get away with it. I can tell you now that you will not get away with it. I can tell you now for free. Um, except if they decide, nah, no, 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 they will always bust you. <laughs> and um, I'll give you a tip here if you're new. I know I've been talking about driving lately, but guys, bear with me if you don't drive. I promise you there are points further down that would be beneficial to you. Um, but whilst we're on the subject of driving, I'll just start cheap the same. If you know you're going to go through the you know congestion charge zone in London, then you can just pay before you go. Um, just type in, I, I don't live in London, so I don't really pay that much, but I don't really. I haven't really paid attention to how to pay and things like that but i did get a fine recently for driving there through there and i'm like really how and i had to pay that one that one the money is the money is not cheap that one ah i had to pay um but if you know you if you know how you're if you're going to go through there you just pay it's cheaper when you just pay beforehand than when they give you a fine um and if you want to pay you can always just go online and just put um congestion charge how to pay it's usually easy i've never paid for it like that before because like I said, it's only one time that I defaulted, and it wasn't even my fault that I defaulted. I I, just, I didn't even know how I I didn't even know how I went through that charging congestion charge zone. I don't even know, but I went through it and I paid fine. Um, but if you're gonna go through there, if you know you're gonna go through there, cause I, I think weekends are free, I believe. Correct me, Londoners, if you're here. Um, um, but yeah, just if you know you're gonna go through them, just pay. You don't poke into other people's businesses. In the UK, everyone likes to mind their business. If you come out of your house, let me just give you a quick tip. If you come out of your house and your neighbor that was outside sees you and like rushes inside, doesn't even want to wait for you to say hello or hi, my dear brothers and sisters, that neighbor is not interested in talking to you. So as she's mind her business, just like I have one here that minds her business, you mind your business too. And um, that's just how life is. And you move on. You shouldn't revamp a rented property without the landlord's approval or without the or without the estate agent's approval if you're ever going to do anything to a house always ask for permission because my dear if you ever do something to your house and you might think oh actually i'm beautifying the house for the landlord and you you're about to move out they'll tell you no please put the house to where you you met it you know how people have kids and they're like oh i want this this room to be like you know, my baby boy's room. I want decorated. Before you do any sort of decoration, if it's not your house, ask for permission. Because when you're leaving, if the house does not look exactly as it was in the inventory, in the inventory, <laughs> um, then my dear, your deposit might, might have to um, go in for that. 
and that's just what it is so yeah you shouldn't really be visiting restaurants that are, that are very close to tourist location because to be honest with you those restaurants half the time are so expensive they literally inflate their prices because i think they believe that oh i'm, I'm beside a tourist area so i can do that and get away with it and quite honestly they do get away with it so if you have google maps on your phone just search for google maps um and eat tree pizza house whatever it is that you want to go buy stuff and just walk a bit further and all you know and buy what you need to buy as opposed to buying in close to all the stories of um um areas because they are very expensive except obviously if money is not your problem and you know you can't be bothered because sometimes genuinely you can't be bothered to walk five minutes more i'm just like fine i'm just gonna buy it it is what it is <laughs> except that but obviously if you're very tight to money then and you're going to be doing a lot of like eating out then you might want to consider just walking a bit further um yeah yeah Next. you shouldn't get upset if you go visit somebody and they offer you a cup of tea don't because it's the culture here and yeah don't, honestly honestly don't get upset that's actually the one of the best ways that people can welcome you into their houses so do not get upset so yeah that's a quick one next you shouldn't ignore road signs speed limits because these are there to keep you safe to keep us all safe and again if you're going to read a road sign i'll put something here just to help out read it if you're a new driver um, read it from bottom to top that would make much sense and that's how you read the road sign um, if your driver your driving instructor did not teach you this then I'm sorry you need to go and collect your money back because ah, it's vital it made my life so much easier because I'm looking at the road sign and I'm like I don't know what this is the same but when you read it from top to bottom from bottom to top then you understand that oh i put a road sign here and you can when you read it from bottom to top you might understand it better than if you read it from top to bottom I mean, if like if you're like me, that assimilates a bit, you know, differently. So, um, I just thought I'd keep that in there. Um, but yeah, you should also you shouldn't be driving on the right-hand lane if you're doing the bare minimal speed. So, in a motor uh, on a motorway, sixty miles per hour to seventy miles per hour. Now, sixty miles per hour for like lorries, trucks, and you know. And sometimes, you know, if you're a new driver and you're on, on a motorway, you might be doing sixty. You might even be doing fifty-five because you know your hands are not strong on the wheels here. You're still trying to get your bearing, which is fine. Please do not mistakenly go to the far right side, the right lane. No, no, that's those lanes are not for you. Those lanes are for people that either want to break the law or just want to overtake. <laughs> um, hopefully, not break the law. Um, but yeah, those are for people that, you know, want to overtake. So please just stay on the left-hand side of the road to save a lot of beep, 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 people buzzing at you, people screaming out at you, people, you know, nah. And you, or you, if someone's screaming out at you, you might get disoriented and that's not a pretty sight. So just thought I'd mention that. So yeah. And lastly, you shouldn't go to work late. <laughs> they frown so much at late coming in the UK. Like, if you go to work late, like... Once you do it more than once, they already they've already labelled you like oh, actually she comes. In. Even if it's one minute late that you get into work, you're always seen as though you came in the same time as someone that's coming twenty minutes late. I promise you, no matter how, there might be someone that comes in like thirty minutes late all the time and you come in one minute late. They categorize all of you in the same boat. So you shouldn't be going to work late. You shouldn't be going to gatherings late. They will start without you. Um, they don't really say, oh, I'm going to wait for Flora to come. Maybe your close friends will. But, like, if it's a formal event, don't go late. Like, they'll start without you. And and, and I feel like if you have a repetition, be like, oh, she, she's going to come late anyways. You know, and, and that's not good. Uh, I don't know. They're always saying black people are always late to stuff. I mean, I, I, obviously, I know about African time. And I'm not going to come here and tell you that I'm a saint and I, you know. But, but, when in my student days, you know, you know, I actually, you know, I actually got a good remarks for coming in early. I think it's only at work that I go early. Other events, I'm always late. Which is so bad. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned one or two things. If you did, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. I hope this video is not too long. I'm going to try to cut as much as possible. I was in a lot of talking. I actually enjoyed filming this video for you guys. Uh, my little one is sleeping, so I just felt like we had time to like talk without any... <laughs> Bless him, any interruptions because he's getting so vocal these days. I'm quite happy about it because it means you know he's learning and he's progressing and he's growing and you know all of that good stuff. But, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys again. Bye.